In the budget mouse segment, it's often said the good mice are getting cheaper and the cheaper mice are getting better. And this terminology goes very well with the mouse we are gonna talk about today, which holds a flagship sensor and a flagship MCU for just under or around $30. So without any more delay, let's get introduced to Jinmeng Butterfly. Today's review unit was sent to me by Gadget Nova. Gadget Nova has been one of the prime importers of PC peripherals in Bangladesh and being the authorized distributor of Attack Shark, Jinmeng, Free Wolf, and so on. You can grab today's Jinmeng Butterfly for only 3300 BDT for the next two days and for 3700 BDT after the offer ends. And now, onto the video. So, at first, Let's get introduced to our today's brand for those who are unfamiliar with it. Jinmeng is a sub-brand of another company named Free Wolf, which is also a peripheral brand and has quite the popularity in the Middle Europe and in the Asia. Jinmeng has been recently popular in the budget peripherals market with their M87 keyboard, which is one of the most talkiest pre-built keyboard you can find under future dollar. And with their affordable lineup continuation, they also introduced the Jinmeng Butterfly MS301. And now let's start the unboxing of it. Opening the box, at first we get a user manual, then a set of OEM grip tapes and an extra set of fits and then on the right side of the box there is the extra accessories pack where we find a braided Type-C to a cable with a dongle extender at, a, at the Type-C end and also the dongle extender is made out of metal and feels pretty solid to hold on and with that there is also the 2.4 GHz USB dongle. Also there is a foam cutout with the shape of the dongle whose purpose we are gonna be showing later. And after that, we get our desert mouse wrapped in a foam pack. Last but not least, we have another surprise of this mouse which is placed right out of the cardboard, which is a battery charger with a 300mAh extra battery inside which we are gonna be discussing in the later part of the video. And that's all to the unboxing. Now let's talk about the shape of the mouse. As per the specs of the mouse, its dimension is about 180mm by 57mm by 40mm with slight deviation on length, width and height. This is in fact an uncommon dimension width wise since it's quite narrower than the typical mice available in this range. But the shape really makes it comfortable to claw grip or fingertip grip with medium hands and someone with small hands can comfortably palm grip it. And inspecting the mouse closer, we see that it has kind of a symmetric ambidextrous design, kind of like the Razer Viper lineup, which means it's quite comfortable to grip with both hands. And looking at the front side, we can see there is no inclination between the left and right click, and they have a uniform height. Then to the middle hump, this mouse kind of has GPX-like hump, with slowly inclining to the bottom instead of a sharp drop, making the mouse really comfortable to palm grip for small hands and for having extra support while claw gripping. And going to yellow shape and comparing this mice to the mice available in this budget, we find that the Attack X3 has the exact identical shape of this mouse since the specs for it isn't available there. And comparing the, its dimension with Vision R1SC and the Firefly F1 Pro, we see that they are also identical especially on the inclination of the hump, but the butterfly has the tallest hump among these three. The middle curve is also identical, but the front part is where the difference is. The butterfly seems, seems to be less sharp on the front part than the other two. Overall, this has been a very comfortable design for me. Since we ended our last part with mentioning about the comfort of the mouse, so let's talk about it now. Let us begin with the surface texture of this mouse. This mouse has a matte finish to it and feels quite comfortable to use on. And due to being a matte finish, it is really easy to grip on even with sweaty hands. The side of this mouse, even though doesn't have any kind of rich edges, it does feel pretty grippy and, and since the side button placements were not too far off from the natural position of the thumb, gripping the mouse in intense sessions was really handy. And since the mouse is an ambidextrous shape, the hand placement was uniform all over the mouse and there was no weird index finger placements. Overall having a shape similar to Viper, the mouse felt pretty comfortable in hand which is of course obstructed by the small footprint which is a bit tough to use in medium hands like mine. Now about the weight distribution of this mouse, and which is also one of the most significant part of this mouse. The rated weight of this mouse is 48 grams, which is the lightest mouse right now under 4000 BDT. And now let's test the weight balance of this mouse. Holding the both front and back end together shows the mouse to incline on the left side, which means the mouse is, is a bit left heavy, and holding it sideways shows the mouse is heavy on the back side, which will also increase more if you install the extra battery pack. So if you are a very serious player, the distribution may concern you, but for the casual players, it is pretty normal and doesn't feel too uncomfortable. Now if you talk about the internals of this mouse, 
The mouse is packed with Pixar 3395 sensor and as I mentioned in the beginning, it is the cheapest mouse in Bangladesh right now with the sensor and the uniqueness doesn't end here. The mouse is also packed with Nordic 52833 MCU which means the mouse is 4K compatible but as for now, the box doesn't come with the 4K receiver, rather with the 1kHz dongle. And even without the 4K mode, the mouse performs just like any kind of flagship mouse and helps to obliterate enemies in the FPS titles easily. And the performance of this mouse just don't rely on the sensor or the MCU only but also the feet. And the mouse comes with PTFE feet which is typical for the price and has a very smooth gliding to it. And the extra feet in the box is also PTFE so you will always have a backup to your necessity. And the mouse comes with 3 mode connectivity with a 2.4 GHz 1 kHz mode and wired and Bluetooth mode. Also in the bottom there are two additional buttons for DPI and polling rate. But for the specs it doesn't end here. The bottom compartment of this mouse can be opened easily and in this compartment one thing you can do is to store the 2.4 GHz dongle along with the foam. Or in the beginning as we saw it comes with, with an extra component which is the extra battery pack with a charger which can be charged via both type C or barrel jack connector and the battery itself is 300 mAh and is same as the 300 mAh inside the mouse. This makes the mouse have 600 mAh capacity and can work for longer gameplay sessions. And also the extra battery pack can be charged even while connected inside the mouse. Overall the mouse is pretty well specced to me. For the switches, this mouse is equipped with Kyle GM 8.0 switch which is also termed as the Black Mamba switches. They are rated for 80 million clicks lifetime which means probably this mouse is gonna carry you for a long time. Looking at the pre-travel, the mouse has no pre-travel on the left side and a very slight pre-travel on the right side. And the side buttons have absolutely zero pre-travel which I really love. And for the scroll wheel, it is equipped with Kyle GE 2.0 which is a very reliable and a smooth feeling wheel which also doesn't strain your finger with the heaviness. And also the scroll wheel has decent tactility to it while middle clicking the mouse. Then for the software, the mouse comes with a very minimal yet detailed customization based software. The first step of this software of this mouse has key remapping option as well as setting up the debounce time which is best not to touch. Then on the second tab you can set the DPI modes then the polling rate and also you can tweak the various options of the sensor features. On the third tab we have macro option and lastly on the last tab there are the basic functionalities but in the last option there is an interesting twist which states it increases the mouse range but will drain the battery faster. So I'll have to try this out and update you guys later. And that's all to the software. So should you buy this mouse or not? In short, yes, I would absolutely recommend to get this mouse at this price range to anyone. And for the long answer why I liked it, for such a low price, the mouse comes with what you can expect in a mid-tier mouse packaging. I can have access to all the necessary grip tapes and the skates. There is also a braided cable and especially there is the most charming part which is the extra battery which makes the lifetime of this mouse doubled. And it is a really good addition to the mouse space and makes Dreamman stand out with a similar spec mouse. The sensor and the MCU also performs what you can expect for the Pixar 3395 sensor. In the end, this is a great mouse for the people who have small hand and people with medium or large hand who can clock read. I hope this video was helpful and please do give a like or subscribe to support me in the future. Thank you.